and the Gray was my thing, Gray Bull. Committee rules. My presence. But that is a theoretical position. A 16 lot of sayings about, yeah, the knight on the rim is dim and so on and so on. Like, do not put the knights on the edge of the board. But chose to play c3 okay this feels a bit suspicious it's kind of too slow bishop g7 castle the bishop to b7 knight to e7 so black develops harmoniously here i would consider going bishop d5 to be honest it's kind of trying to provoke an exchange black doesn't really want to take with the knight because he loses the castle right yeah knight takes pawn takes and then that's a check to black king uh right if you swap the bishops okay you swap the bishops uh, at least at least white preserves this bishop on b3 from being exchanged for knight on a5. And if finally, ultimately, if black goes c6, then, okay, I might consider, well, I probably shouldn't consider seriously sacrificing on f7, but yeah, at least going back to b3. And, you know, for the time being, I've managed to shut this bishop's scope. Right, so knight d2 was played instead, castles, knight to f3, c5, and it turns out that a wise, uh, white face is quite an unpleasant choice. You can't really go to c2 because c4 and your bishop is trapped. And if you go to e2, which was played in the game, then black captures the, the, the bishop on b3 first and then takes the pawn on e4. So knight to g3, bishop c6, and bishop goes to g5. Uh, well, White is down a pawn, but he tries to imitate some compensation. Uh, well, perhaps successfully so, because bishop g5, that's a very unpleasant have to switch from game to game, from one to another, because it's a lot, a lot of them. So let's check the ladies' tournaments. So girls under 18, and here the field is led by, uh, well, Carissa Yip. Actually, two American players. It's Carissa Ip, the top seed, and then Annie Wan, the second seed. So two very, very strong players. I believe both of them are women grandmasters. Carissa Ip being rated like 24, 50. So among, I believe, 20 top 30 in the world was played in, in Sean's game. Uh, right, let me let me see if there is something really, really entertaining going on by that point. Mm, can't really see much. Well, which, you know, when I say entertaining, that means I'm looking for weird positions, the positions that are already kind of tactic connect with knight f4 later on. Right, okay, perhaps knight f4 at once. Let's say as young as in under 14 section. Like, for instance, Gukesh from India. Not only he is a grandmaster, but, well, 2,600 rated. Um, Volodar Murzin perhaps is one of the Russia's, the Russia's uh, bets for the future super grandmaster, right? So very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Murzin with black against Mohabed Taleb. So, and here you can already see that perhaps something went wrong for white. So white is a pawn up, but he 
apparently confused like the king and queen like, he felt really impressed by those very very young players under 10 who are still playing well incredibly quality chess yeah as i said Watzlaw Finnick, one of the favorites to win the under 10 section uh the fellow is rated 2300 already by the way i don't know if his position as good as his rating here yeah indeed white has a very strong pawn on e6 but still has to show the way how he's planning to make the progress okay in one of the games we already have we already have the pawn ending and that's that's quite curious i'm always keen to see those uh so here i have to say black does seem to be winning to me because white simply runs in so-called tsutsuang and in fact that, that that's nice because that, that that's the position where they've gotten to the pawn ending or few moves before and black has already spotted it that yeah so pay attention to black's next move h7 h6 so not rushing with h5 but saving all the tempi so now h3 h5 a3 a6 a4 a5 and eventually white ran out of moves white has to move the king inevitably and when he moves the king black can play king c4 after king c2 go d4 you absolutely have to trade and you lose your e5 pawn so the only chance for white perhaps would be to go f4 hoping to get rid of the pawn and then to play h4 you know and somehow pray to to outlast black <laughs> black's activity but not really because after f3 uh, you'll run into same situation it's a tsuk and you have to move the king and you lose after king c4 so that's exactly what has happened white went king d4 king d2 black went king c4 king c2 played d4 and that's it i believe black is winning there um all righty so girls on the I'm, I'm yet to see okay first results first results i do have first results so here uh on the 10 um girls on the 10 so first game won by white in a spectacular manner simply attacking the king knight g5 well already looks quite scary and black replied with knight h5 somewhat naively trying to stop white on the h file Rook takes h5 fold and queen h7. You know, under 10, um, identifying those patterns quickly is already quite a skill. And yeah, so that, that one's finished. Let me see, let me see if there is something really, really exciting going on. Uh, perhaps not in this section. Let me see. Uh, there was one more player from the open section that I really wanted to mention. Vincent Kema from Germany, uh, the top seed and also a grandmaster in under 16 section. And imagine you'd be learning chess under the supervision of Peter Lecker. How would you like that? I would really, really love that. So, well, the guy has the talent, the guy has achievements already, and he has, well, perhaps one of the best coaches that you, that you can, you can uh, dream of. So, you know, you can imagine this fellow will make a lot of progress so let's see oh uh, well honestly this game i mean white has very good position of course but you know you would expect it's kind of a faster faster conversion from the favorite anyway white's position does look very very attractive especially for me since i am a ready player myself and that that's very often something like that you are getting from the ready opening even though in this game it wasn't the ready it was some like really really slowish slowish setup with c4 e3 queen's uh, queen's gambit without d4 or how should i call it yeah anyway current position is such where white has a very very nice bishop on d4 and that's an art in fact guys so so that you arrange your pieces in such a way that they are very efficient and at the same time kind of invulnerable 
right? So how do you challenge the bishop on d4? And never mind attacking it, but even to trade the bishop on d4 is quite problematic for black. Right, so rook to e1, white does prepare e4 in the right moment. And as I said, yeah, for black, it's very, very hard to even tackle the bishop. Like, imagine you get bishop e7. Uh, yeah, well, actually, black did play bishop e7. So now, e4 is one thing to do, but you might as well go knight c5. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, e4 is a more straightforward and perhaps is the better option. Mm, on the second board in the same section, we do have quite a picturesque position there. So where black apparently has sacrificed the knight. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, look here, guys. That That's an absolutely incredible stuff. So knight take h4, black goes for an attack. Knight take h4, knight e3, double check. Now, if you move the king anywhere else but f3, queen g2 will be a checkmate, right? So you absolutely forced to go to f3, knight f5, and then black is threatening the checkmate on g4. So that seems to be a fantastic combination, fantastic tactical shot, because white really doesn't have the answer to that. Knight g5 runs into knight h4, right? Knight g3, same, knight h4, king in the open, and black is winning. So white perhaps was relying on rook g1, but then guess what? Queen takes g1, knight takes g1 and knight d4 so black wins the queen back and has an absolutely winning position that's an impressive stuff right so somewhere around here it was well perhaps black is <clears throat> black is somewhat better with his pieces being more active but still it's not clear it was not clear if uh black will succeed however after knight e4 spotting this combination with knight h4 is a really really impressive uh, right, let me see, girls under 16, okay, no big surprises here on the top boards, Bibi Sara Asalbaiwa wins over here, uh, well, it happens that, well, it turns out there was a bit of an accident because you have the little notes, Arbiter stopped the clock for 90 seconds after move 11, Black offered a draw at some point, yeah, the game is finished, White has won the game. Leia Gorifulina has won with black, also by a huge margin, literally like eliminating all of the white pieces. And let me go back to open under open under 18 just to figure out what are the results here. Are there any surprises? So Yossi Penko has won his game. Uh, Nihal Sarin with black, while well, the game finished uh, with checkmating attack and I, I don't know if white can prevent the checkmate even like getting rid of all of his pieces but interestingly on board three the very very sharp fight is still on knight e3 well what happens here i think white should be winning with queen d3 i think white should be winning with queen d3 look guys queen to d3 now there is a ah oh, no 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 Okay, that, that's how grandmasters play chess nowadays. I've blundered queen g2 checkmate. <laughs> that's lovely. That was lovely. So I went for a little simplifying combination. Take on d3, take on e3, and you know, and here we go. Uh, pawn ending, pawn up, right? But yeah, queen d3 would have been <laughs> would have been really, really funny. No, e, in fact, yeah, white reacted in the proper way. So captures on e3 goes queen c5, double attack. Uh, aiming at the same ending but here black is not forced to trade the queens um well he actually does which i'm very surprised with if you ask me because it's really really counterintuitive oh well that that's by the way i've forgotten but that's my countryman playing kirill shevchenko uh why didn't he take only three with the queen would be my question because if black trades would it have something to do with black king be, being extremely active like king to e4 king to d3 and who knows right you, you have difficulties moving your pawns forward uh, while black will expand on the king side so instead we have queen sending here and honestly it does look that black is doing all right so, well, equal on material, and even if white manages to pick up a pawn on, on say, g7, all white pawns are weak, and his king is no, doesn't really 
have a good shelter so black at least will have the chance to deliver perpetual really really entertaining game here uh right uh well the armenian talents uh sean sarxisian and his game is still on as well remember this sharp sicilian where white lost slash sacrificed the pawn i'm still not sure what it was so after d5 white went queen e2 remember we are looking at it queen e6 bishop e3 it turns out white does have sufficient compensation and here you know it might as well be that white has slightly better chances thanks to blockade on d4 well, well not really perhaps against a pair of bishops but yeah the position is completely unclear so let's see if Sarxian managed to outplay his opponent. I don't really like bishop f8 move. Yeah, it's understandable. You want your knight from c8 out, but at the same time, yeah, swapping those bishops is something you don't really want to do. Okay, that's the current position here. Uh, white is clearly better. However, to win this, you still have to prove something. Yeah, black has his king active. Black can try to bring the knight to b6, and if the pawn from b3 gets exchanged, then later on on c4. Mm, looks quite interesting, I have to say. Uh, well, so we do have some end games here and there. We well looking at if there is any any kind of really nice spectacular positions at the end. Um, not really. Yeah. So let's let's uh, pick a game to follow because that will be really really tough to jump from one game to the other. Um, I suggest we look at Kirill Shevchenko's game simply because that's not very far from being a surprise of the round. So um, the player with the white pieces, as I said, Ukrainian grandmaster Kirill Shevchenko is, uh, uh, you know, a huge favorite against his opponent, and yet it doesn't look like he will win this game. So from the looks of it, he probably is planning to go for a perpetual. So checks here and there, queen to yeah, you can't really make progress. That's 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 a problem. Yeah, queen to c7, king f6, and the queen b6 will kind of for yeah, well actually that, that that might be something because you kind of force black to go to to go to g5, right? But then a white is yet unable to capture unable to capture on b7 so that's that's interesting stuff well, let's see well, let's see king goes to f6 yeah so the only way for white to try to play for a win is you know to give the check from b6 to see if black is willing to go to fifth rank yeah queen b6 check played so now if black goes back to seventh rank i'm not trying to say that it's that king f7 loses for black but at least you drop the pawn on b7 with a check so psychologically i can imagine that's not something um, you would necessarily do with black right so a check on b6 let's see what black's decision is going to be mm, anything anything else uh well some f really funny night end games then a pawn endgame where black is black is a pawn up but apparently is lost this a5 will never materialize a uh, double g pawn doesn't do uh, black any good and white's past e pawn should certainly decide the game so that that's quite a picturesque position where you know you, you're you're a pawn up and at the same time you you've lost in the end game so those are those are a few games that are still going. We might have a very, very long one now that I realize, uh, as I said, this is the the toughest matchup. So players are almost equal in rating. Sankalp Gupta and uh, Mahdi Gulami Orimi. And uh, this is like, yeah, oh, it, it really depends. Like, like white can take on D3 and then it's probably a draw pretty soon if white captures but yeah but white did did decide to capture on b6 i'm i'm somewhat surprised and, and, and confused to be honest I mean, what was wrong with capturing on d3 because white decided to take on b6 bishop to e4 bishop d4 check and rook h2 if any side has chances here it's certainly black right so 
I am surprised. Why would you prefer this with white? Uh, bishop to b6. Uh, sorry, <laughs> bishop b6 was played earlier. Yeah, bishop to f2, g5. g5 is just a tiny bit inaccurate, it seems. I, I would have gone with rook h1 check, where white can't really play king e2 because bishop f3. So therefore, after rook h1, white would be forced to go bishop g1, and then you try to invade with the king to g4. g5 is a little bit straightforward way. So g5, swap here. Anyway, black seems to be much, much better. And let's not forget, one inaccurate move like king g1 would lose you the game because rook h1 is a checkmate. Rook to d4, right, rook to d4, hitting the a4 pawn. Mm, yeah, so now it's a big question. So what do you do? Do you play Do you play king, B, king e6, trying to... Um, bring the queen or uh, the king over, or you just go with the h pawn. And black decided to do the later. So h4, pawn swapped on h4, king, uh, rook takes a4. So now I imagine it's it's h3, h3 threatening a check, h2, and then yeah, try to try, uh, try to make something out of this h pawn. And it's not that easy for white to stop it. Yeah, check on h1 to start with okay understandable so king goes to e2 i imagine h3 and now uh white's task is to be on time to put the rook behind the past pawn i say rook a8 h2 rook goes here and still there are really really tricky moves available for black i imagine like going d4 for instance yeah well th th this by the way seemingly ends into a draw rook to c1 threatening h1 queen after rook takes there is a check on c2 king e3 why uh, black takes black takes the rook white takes the bishop yeah black can't really win against the bishop and two pawns and the white can't really win because if black wants he can bring the king here and then sack his rook for the b pawn yeah we are actually heading towards this line funny enough Okay, uh, white uh, went for rook a8 and black kind of improves on the previous line because rook a1 is really, really, uh, so rook b1 is very, very clever. h2 is still a threat, so you need to stop the pawn on h3 and therefore you don't have the time to cover your b pawn. Yeah, rook b1 is a much better move. So after, say, rook h8, Rook takes b2. Yeah, that's that's what I was. Uh, that's what uh, was played. Rook b2. Black is a pawn up. The h3 pawn survives, and I believe black should be winning here. King to e1. Uh, okay, how do we do it? Well, I believe for the time being you can play bishop g2. Hang on a second. Ah, rook b3. Okay. So it was rook b3, a5, rook a, a4, rook a3, a5. Okay. So for the time being, you don't really, you you can't really make progress with the h pawn. You have to take care of the a pawn, and you still have to activate the uh, the king. Yeah, that that's, you know, that's the message I'm sometimes sending to those very top elite players when I'm commentating because yeah, sometimes you just uh, forget about that and and you try to calculate the end game. You try to play the moves like which are tempting, like take pawns here and there. But yeah, but the king needs to take part when it goes to uh, when it goes about the end game. Uh, remember the pawn ending I was talking about. Uh, remember the pawn ending I was talking about, uh, where White was a pawn down. He actually did win this end game pawn down. Uh, that's the one. That's the one. It was won by White in style. So e6 king d8 and noticing the pawn structure there white actually did the cruel thing so a check and then stale mated the black king so black well it'd be almost a stalemate if not for this extra pawn black had and after a5 b5 it turns out yeah this pawn marches over and promotes into queen and checkmates the black king so right how many games do we have uh my compatriot Shevchenko has made a draw that perhaps is the biggest surprise. 
uh, Sean Sarkisian on board four is still playing, and we are talking about under 18 section, right? Uh, Sean Sarkisian is still playing. Uh, absolutely drawish position, if you ask me. I don't know why would you play that. Well, perhaps trying to convert the advantage in rating. And uh, yeah, and this game that we were looking at, um, Kulami Rimi managed to win the second pawn. And as I said, this might be this very well. It's quite probable that it will be the longest game of the round, simply because the nature of those end games. Opposite colors, uh, opposite colored bishops with the rooks, right? So, as the defending side, you are in a bit of a despair because you can't really can't really save the game, right? You, you can patiently defend, and basically the game finishes in a draw only if your opponent got bored. There is no constructive way to save this game, so you have to be very patient. You have to, and and honestly, talking of that one, this has to be a lost position. Simply, this has to be a lost position. All right, let me check if there are any surprises in in other sections. So, girls under eighteen, Carissa mm, Yip won, Annie Young won. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, yeah, that, 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 that's it. So all three top seeds from under 18 girls are from the United States. Are from the United States. Mm, right, there are some games going, actually. There is one more with opposite colored bishops. Yeah, Black just offered the draw here. Let's see if White is inclined to play for a win. I don't really think he is. There are some draws there, I have to say. No, why why decline the draw? Okay, okay. This 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 round's gonna go. This round's gonna go forever. Okay. By the by the way, yeah, I didn't mention the, the schedule. So I think after the end of this round there will be quite a limited break, like up to 15 minutes, and the second game will be played almost immediately. All right, let me see how many games um, are there. So there is still something going on in girls under 10. Boys under 12, one game is still in progress. Mm, quite a few in ladies under 12. Under 14 section is finished. So once again, if you're keen to see the results, you should do so on world2020.ge, the official uh, site of this event. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, well, anyway, the round is slowly coming to an end, and uh, I think, yeah. So, what what are the notable results? Um, Sean Sarxian apparently. Oh, wait a second. Is he winning now? That's incredible because it looked completely drawish to me. H five, f five, king goes to f seven. And then, hang on a second. Could I just take on h5? Could I just take on h5, right? That's absolutely incredible. It's absolutely incredible because it looks like white could have taken on h5, and that's that's a draw, right? We, we go to d4, e3, f4, and this should be a draw. And instead, instead, why? Captured on g6 and resigned after king g6 because now his pawn is hanging. If he captures it's king h5, and black is just on time to take the h4 pawn and then protect his f pawn in order to promote it into queen. So, right, more and more games are finished, but still, there are still some. No, not really. Not really. So, three games. Surprisingly enough, in the very, very, <laughs> very, very young age groups. So Victoria Smetanka under 10 against uh, Jasmine Su. White is a pawn up and I would probably say has to have a winning position. But yeah, but still, it's not that easy to convert, I imagine. It has to be, at some point, it has to be white moving the D pawn forward, getting black king distracted from the B pawn, and then capture the B pawn, win the game this way. Mm, but yeah, but since I'm checking the 
you know the score um, the score sheet of this game it seems that white can't really find the proper moment because like next last around last 20 moves white is hovering around with his knight so trying to win it without actually moving the pawn yeah like here for instance you can play d5 and you are basically threatening to play d6 and d7 right to so get the pawn on d7 so where it will inevitably destruct the king and if king goes to c7 well apart from king c5 which is sort of a positional move you might as well want to play a4 which wins on a spot uh and having said that i just realized that you don't need d5 for that and this uh victoria schmetankina the young lady proved me wrong yeah of course bishop c4 was a blunder then a4 should win on a spot because white creates uh himself a second past pawn in fact perfect technique yeah a4 bishop d3 here honestly I, I would play a5 but knight d7 is absolutely fine knight to d7 check king c7 and knight e5 so once again winning the second pawn the g6 pawn is doomed right b a4 and then king a4 to be extra solid no need to take the g6 pawn immediately it will not survive check okay king to b4 uh, white still gonna white still gonna take on g6 uh by the way in case you were wondering there are still some games going on and to be honest while here i have little doubt that it has to be winning objectively black has to be winning here in this one that's uh open section under 20 but in girls under 12 under not not under 20 pardon me under 12 right and girls under 20, 12 in this game i'm not even sure if black is winning i'm not sure what what's the evaluation here well perhaps now it's a draw because the knights attacked right if you move the knight yeah yeah now it's a draw right so you you'll have to move the knight white captures the pawn yeah yeah and then you just wait with the bishop yeah this has to be a draw okay so we are left with yeah this game with in the end game the end game uh knight versus bishop has finished so we only have two eric Zhao with white uh trying to save being a piece down but well having the very active king active rook and trying to yeah trying to harass the a5 pawn and the second one as i said which can last forever under 12 uh ladies yeah as long as black b pawn is alive right you still can leave a dream and try to try to make the case that yeah i'll i'll, I'll push the pawn forward later move 90 that is okay impressive so let me let me see here by the way Mm, if you guys are aware of uh, rules of chess so that's the position on move 57 and that's the position on move 84 where clearly no pawn has moved and you know no traces happen so in fact it's half of a distance to so-called 50 moves rule i'm kind of comforting myself that it cannot last forever at some point black will have to show a bit of a progress or he will oh or, or you know or, uh, white will claim a draw right by the way uh let me see girls under 12 i said is still in progress right the, the position that looked completely drawish and draw draw it is i believe let me see and no not really that's still still in progress this one so two games we have I, interestingly white decided to move the king i mean that there was no need whatsoever with king being here on c6 keeping an eye on the b pawn you could have just moved the bishop here and there and that there was no need to do anything it's not that i'm saying that white is no longer it's kind of white <laughs> no longer can make a draw but why would you bother to just keep the king on a6 move the bishop here and there right all righty and i'm all eyes on this other game where where you know honestly i don't quite understand what black's struggle is why black keeps hovering around for 30 minutes yeah i understand it's like you don't really want to don't really want to sack the a5 pawn 
and therefore the bishop went to d8. Oh, well, maybe that was clever. Maybe, in fact, that was clever because now with the bishop on d8, you are actually kind of allowed to trade the rooks, right? Because, yeah, you, previously the bishop was found on c3, and, and yeah, if you trade the rooks, you kind of lose the a5 pawn. Over here, none of that can happen. So check, king goes to c8. Uh, well, white can't even prevent rook d5 check. So I'm not sure what white's supposed to do here. It looks that, yeah, it looks that black has to, uh, has to win sooner or later. Uh, yeah, the bishop versus knight with one pawn only finished in a draw. So that's the last game of round one, or rather game one of today's playing day today to remind you it's last 16 in each category so eight players will be eliminated eight will go through in a second day after today's round Alrighty, so the king is safe black wants to play rook to d5 or rook to c6 depending on what white's doing so if you want to if you want to protect the fifth rank with white uh, hang on a second. Rook f7, rook to c6. And okay, okay. Rook f2, bishop b6. Yeah, it seems that black found the winning mechanism. So he puts the bishop on b6, and after this check, he goes rook c7. Speculating on rook's trade, keeping the eye on the c2 pawn, as well as rook c5, which will be a checkmate. So black certainly made progress and white is forced to trade the rooks. The question, however, would be how easy it will be to win from there. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard, Shannon. So you trade. But how does black win? Ah, capture here and yeah, and, and multiple took swans. Because if you go to a6, you actually lose, right? King c6, it's not a stalemate. You'd have the c pawn, you will have to move the c pawn. All right. All right, so rook to f5, deciding not to trade the rooks. But now black can take on c2. I understand all the stalemate hits, hints. But, uh, you know, you can't really get rid of the rook. Yeah, check was given, back to c7, rook back to c7. If, yeah, well, bishop c7 is also playable, then you intend to play rook c3. But you have to be careful, like here. Ah, not really. Now, I was wondering if there is if there is a chance for a stalemate for white, like say in this line, rook to b6, and you can't really capture the rook because of the stalemate. But yeah, it's enough for black to play king c8, right? And then he is ready to capture the b3 pawn, and he might as well capture the rook next move. So interesting. Um, interesting. Black decided not to. Uh, black decided not to trade the rooks. And I wonder if, okay, that, that's, yeah, number 100, look, it's number move number 100, 101, and still no result. And I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest, because uh, we really need the break to set the things up for a second round, but hopefully, hopefully I'll be on time. Uh, yeah. Okay, but now it's completely winning. You just give a check on e5, right? Or... I mean, you can you can take the pawn as well. Uh, I would think that this king on b5 being such an annoying piece that, uh, yeah, at some point you just... Ah, oh, well, rook c6, clever played. So now, if you take on c6, it is actually a stalemate. It actually is a stalemate. But yeah, rook e3 and then rook e5, get rid of this king, win the game. Or just go b3. Yeah, so inevitably it will be finished. The move number 104, by the way. It's a very, very close fight. Yeah, I believe you just go b3, bishop e5. No, rook e5. So this will prolong prolong the game quite a bit, I have to say. So there was, there was a way to win immediately with um, 
yeah over here yeah okay it's gone it's gone so now you know when plays are very short of time the moves will be coming into like bigger chunks so not move by move but but you know a few moves played quickly and then we immediately get it in, into um into the analysis applet okay as you could see updated and then few more moves and few more moves and yeah nothing can stop it seems nothing can stop a black's b pawn so black is winning here all right so let me see is black winning he's black winning i mean, I mean he, he's supposed to be winning here b1 by the way b1 is winning I'm, I'm wondering why wouldn't you play b1 it's you know the rook pawn and the bishop but this time it's the bishop of a right color the bishop which controls the a1 square so i suggest i mean for simplicity's sake you can play b1 and then just swap the rooks comes with uh, come with the king win the a4 pawn win the game Mm, what a long game that one didn't expect it to be so long to be honest okay let's see let's see hopefully we will not miss the start of round two ah okay so one more time moves are coming in chunks black actually went for p1 yeah that's not one of those uh, that's not one of those exception positions when when you have a fortress or something yeah with light square bishop by the way it would have been a draw right because you simply cannot uh, extract the king from a1 without stalemating it but being as it is yeah you just get the king on b3 yeah 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 the rest i believe okay let's wait till the end but i don't really think the rest is necessary this will be will be converted those players are very very tough yeah king of one queen of two checkmate uh game one is officially over i don't really see any games in progress there have been quite a few surprises here and there once again uh pardon but with 80 games it will take me half an hour to announce all the results so please make sure to check the results on the official website world2020.ge the official website of the organizers where it is listed into sections uh right so with that being said i think i'll try to go for a short break now to you know to set things up for game number two which starts well which is listed like in five minutes from now i believe it might take us a little bit longer stay tuned guys
Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to FIDE Online World Cadets and Youth Rapid Chess Championship. Uh, well, the tournament where very, very best young players from all over the pla planet will establish who is the World Rapid Championship in their respective age category. So we have gathered all the players from under 10 to under 18. As I was previously saying, well, half of the finalists having the field title. There are eight grandmasters playing. There are a few women grandmasters playing and so on and so on. Overall, a very, very strong field. So let's waste no time anymore. The games have been started. That's the second game of the day. To remind you of the system, it's only two games per day, only two games per round. In case of a tie, 1-1, one, one, there will be an Armageddon played with white having an extra minute and black having the draws. Uh, right, and, and I want to start with one of the games that saw a surprise, one of the matches that saw a surprise in a very, very early stage. So a compatriot of mine, Kirill Shevchenko, uh, one of the favorites of uh, under 18 events, uh, he's seed number three, uh, well, was held to a draw by his much lower rated opponent. And yeah, it looked like uh, uh, helper Ramirez uh, played a very, very solid game with black. So now let's see what happens there. So the Ukrainian player went for the Kings Indian defense. Uh, well, that's quite quite curious because, yeah, D5, known as the Petrosian system, so early D5, right? A5, Bishop G5, H6, Knight to A6, Bishop D7. I believe that something very similar was used by Gary Kasparov a long time ago. So castle short, queen to e8, b3. And for some reason, I thought it has to, had to be some knight h7 move, but uh, Shevchenko goes for g5 and h5. Apparently being ready to sacrifice the pawn like that. So if white captures on h5, I believe black. Ah, no, no, no. If white captures on h5 or g4, it's actually a covert trap like that. You can't really take because now the bishop is, the bishop is trapped. Right, and as you can see, the quality of the broadcast improves day by day and even game by game because eventually I'm able that that was that was my fault, guys. But finally, I'm able to show the time, and of course, it makes much more sense. It's it's a rapid tournament, so once again, the reminder that 15 minutes plus 10 seconds is the time control. So now you can see at last uh, you can see the time on your clock, which of course is much more informative so h5 clever move f3 black expands on the king side bishop f2 knight h5 knight is heading towards f4 a3 knight f4 and rook to b1 so black kind of succeeded to some degree got the knight on f4 but still like playing f5 would mean that white's going to take and will install one of his knights on e4 right keeping a stronghold here so it's not that trivial, even though it might seem that black improved the situation a lot on the king side, but it's not that trivial how exactly black has to continue with his attack. So black goes knight c5. Now after b4, um, a takes, a takes, right? I mean, we can we can uh, show this line. Uh, knight a4 would be kind of more standard way of reacting, but there is also knight d3 possibly black and put the knight on d3 and knight will be hanging in the air for some time but very likely to be exchanged on, for one of the bishops in case of bishop e3 black at the very least can take and put the other knight on f4 so has to be a good position for black but once again kirill already had a very promising position in game one and yet failed to convert it so i'm really really looking forward to what's going to happen here uh, Nihal Sarin, as far as I remember, won his game one. That's yet another very high rated player in under 18 section. And in the second game, ah, well, so he went for B3. Uh, well, a really a favorite of young players when it comes to playing on internet. Uh, Nimtsovich, Larsen, whatever, opening, right? And that's one of the key ideas. Uh, in case of g6, they swap on f6 and they try to play in spirit of Trompovsky, 
right? So the Trumpovsky opening is d4, bishop goes to g5, swaps on f6. Here it's b3, bishop b2, but still swaps on f6. Anyway, no time to delve in all the positional subtleties. Now, if you look at this, white seems to enjoy a very comfortable position where black's bishop on g7 currently is somewhat limited and white has more space on the queen side and his king is safe overall seems to be really enjoyable position to play with white however yeah if you ask me black is not yet desperate what he has to do he has to try to install the knight on e4 by means of rook e8 and then knight e4 that's what typically that's how typically black reacts in such positions uh right so mm, that'll be it for under 18 section let's check something else we have oh wow we have a very very interesting position there if it is interesting i thought i thought it actually oh whoa 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 now let, let's check guys let's check it. it it's super exciting so dave and smith it's uh boys under 16 we are talking about against as i said one of the most let's say highest uh, one of the highest rated highest rated in the category and yeah very very promising youngster from germany winston kamer uh yeah but what's this line guys uh, the blockade the, the advanced karakan bishop to f5 that seems to be quite fashionable nowadays bishop to g5 queen b6 and then somewhat peculiar move bishop d3 white captures uh queen takes b2 seemingly just winning the game on a spot and white pretends that nothing happens and goes knight f3 and this caused we, uh, vincent came up to think for to tank for like eight minutes and he decides against taking the rook he goes queen b5 so i imagine if black captures the rook white has queen b3 hitting the b7 pawn then planning to castle go knight c3 trap the queen and also in these structures e6 the disruptive e6 move is typically very very dangerous because e6 f6 and black for a very very extended period of time is unable to develop his king side so it is i have to say it is real conflict on the board it is real chess it is very very entertaining to watch so now i imagine white can try to play for initiative in the end game by going e6 accepting the trade of queens right but taking only f7 intermediately possibly going knight e5 once again intermediately the queen is still alive but black has to react to a check and after king e8 for instance take on d3 with the pawn i imagine this might promise some compensation with quick development and black having some weaknesses and still not being fully developed uh right on a second board interestingly uh john bull beer is already completely winning it seems on board two uh right you don't see oh yeah you do see the board too now uh right i don't know what has happened both players playing very very fast and white is already winning mm, this seemed to be ah yeah 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 so, so pe perhaps something went wrong straight from the opening it, it does seem to be like one of those exchange variations in the king's indian where white swaps only five early ah yeah and bishop g5 here I have to confess i'm not familiar with this move interestingly and i presume uh black had to swap himself on d1 so instead he went bishop g4 kind of overlooking i presume a swap here and knight d5 you have to take on d5 now uh if bishop d8 knight jumps to f4 but after c takes d5 the knight on c6 is hanging as well as the rook on d8 so you have to go for an awkward move like f6 and then everything's forced check knight f7 white wins the exchange and perhaps just wins the game yeah rook to d1 and i believe jonas Bire will be through to the next round right but yeah but the position on board one is really really entertaining and i'm wondering how it's going to develop that that seems to be certainly one of the games of the route i mean 
it's very hard to claim that this particular game is the most entertaining because I, I imagine that's like those young adorable players they have their supporters there might be parents watching and so on and so on but yeah apologies for that but as I said having 80 rapid games simultaneously I well simply stand no chance to try to cover all of them so well once again pardon me for the random uh, randomness of my picks sometimes right so, so i'll try to see if there is anything like super exciting going on and as i was saying we actually have to in those first rounds we actually have to look not at the very very favorites but somewhat closer to the second half of a of a pairing tree because there will be players who are much more evenly matched right and this incredibly sharp position as far as i understand comes from one of the one of the versions of the king's indian uh right king's indian with g3 uh okay all that makes sense queen c2 a5 rook d1 a4 and a4 does seem to be a blunder right because white captures on c6 queen b6 knight back to d4 queen b4 white is safely up a pawn it would seem knight takes e4 knight c7 knight takes g3 what's going on here what's going on here and for some mysterious reason to be honest why decided not to capture on e8 instead takes on g3 rookie three and white is thinking apparently about knight d5 now i realize yeah that, that it was perhaps it was perhaps very very clever to take on g3 and not on e8 because originally I thought white was planning to take on a8 and this is something that you don't want to do oh well actually white came up with a different move which is queen to f2 hitting the rook attacking f7 and keeping both threats knight to d5 or knight a8 white has to be completely winning but it feels like he's somewhat playing with fire queen a5 a bit of a surprise if you ask me because I guess black might be might be checkmated by force. Yeah, queen a5 is kind of a clever move trying to limit the damage because after say queen e3, queen c7, black is only an exchange down, I believe still a terrible position if you ask me, queen e8, bishop d5. But yeah, but after queen a5, I reckon queen f7, king goes and knight e8 should be a checkmate. Not only you hit the bishop, but you're also threatening queen f8 checkmate. Like for instance, in this line, if black goes bishop h6, you still have your checkmate with queen e, uh, with queen f8. And if this will finish like like I've just described, it will be a really really spectacular finish to this game. Yeah. So queen to f7, black is forced to go to h8, and then knight e8. I don't know about you guys I don't really see how to stop a checkmate here the g7 is hanging right plus the threat of queen of eight so really really want to see what's going to happen yeah it it seems that yeah you know like the white was acting in a little bit a random way because after knight g3 you would expect like knight d5 wins on the spot right hit the queen yeah 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 and white is going for it white is going for it so i'm really really curious to see what will be the result yeah, by the way uh let me mention it once again out loud so it's very hard for me to even keep the track on the mini matches so sometimes i would say so sometimes i'll say okay so this player wins but i don't know how the first game has finished here bear, bear with me but with 80 games going it really seems to be impossible but yeah but if the score is 1-1 be sure we will be covering the armageddon between those two players right so i don't see uh, any i don't see any uh defense for black so i believe let's call it a day and award white a spectacular win let's say yeah white played brilliantly there is no defense against queen g7 all right let's move on we have a lot a lot of games to cover bishop h6 played no i i cannot really no let's wait queen f8 it is important you probably win in some other ways but queen f8 checkmate in two bravo 
bravo that that's that's well played for white queen f8 and a checkmate on f8 very next move really really spectacular finish all right so let me let me move on yeah by the way as i said jonas Bire has won and once again pardon if i'm mispronouncing the name but yeah uh vincent Kema. uh here this sharp sharp karakan it actually is pretty sharp still so after queen b5 white played queen e3 hinting at e6 e6 played anyway knight b to d2 knight d7 c4 move with the tempo blocking the scope of the queen so that white is able to castle after knight e7 well knight e7 looks so risky if you ask me rook a to b1 so yeah i understand black is a couple of moves away from achieving kind of a total stability right like getting the knight on d5 developing the bishop and, and uh, being absolutely safe but for the time being like various threats are around knight d5 played by vincent that's really really mm, well you know that that's a that's a very bold move because here i'd be looking at exchange sacrifice like that rook takes b5 knight e3 take the pawn on b7 and after knight f1 you are not forced to capture the knight you can take on c4 and black's you know black's remaining forces are not very well coordinated so as white i'm planning to win this knight on f1 and try to get i don't know other knight to e4 and then check on d6 so at least it does look promising but no but white decided to go white decided against it white decided to play queen e1 after queen a6 uh well now it's much harder to believe in white success because black is about to establish the coordination like to play b5 at the very least like support the c4 pawn and yeah and white is nowhere near delivering a checkmate uh, right. Let, let, let me check the girls under um, under eighteen because there are quite a few stars from United States of America playing, like Carissa Yip, for instance, at the, the top seed, and actually seems to be seems to be enjoying her her Kings Indian. I don't know how this came about. Like the knight on c eight is not very typical piece for the Kings Indian, but this pawn chain and you know all the nightmares the White King are certainly very very typical yeah carissa won her game one and uh, being a almost a thousand uh, it's more than more than a thousand points favorite uh, elo favorite of course she is expected to win this one but nevertheless this seems to be a very very nice position black has here even though now that i'm thinking it's not very easy to get to this king right let's not forget the moment you take on h2 white typically doesn't take back but instead plays bishop f2 guarding the h4 square so there is still some fight in this one mm, and yeah I, I don't know if i've mentioned but all top three seats from ladies section from girls section under 18 are from the united states of america so the second board we have any one and on board three on table three the third seat is uh, thalia cervantes okay let me let me search for something entertaining rather than you know rather than the top seats uh well there are some you know unfortunate uh, unfortunate events like uh, for instance this game finished after white played d4 so i presume i speculate it must have been something with this connection and yeah that's you know that's online chess after all so the players are responsible for their internet connection here uh let me see open 14 open under 14 where we have an indian rising star gukesh i said he had uh, 26 he is not yet 2600 player but he inevitably gonna be because yeah the guy is a grandmaster and he's not yet 14 years old right looks oh uh, well it's actually quite a sharp position uh, very promising for black right with such a monster spawn center but one cannot deny it's sharp right so white um 
kind of got some material gains. Uh, let me let, let me try to count what what's on the board. Uh, so it's actually even number of points. Uh, White is a clear exchange up. However, his pieces are somewhat stranded. This knight on a tree was not doing very much, right? And Black has huge potential for the king side attack after knight b5 i'm wondering if white is alive because bishop b5 bishop f uh, bishop g4 bishop f3 is very very annoying bishop g4 played so now i presume in order not to get checkmated you'll have to play an awkward move queen f1 because if you put the queen on d2 then bishop f3 happens g3 is an absolute must and it's not clear how white is planning to stop queen h3 so after bishop g4 Perhaps the only move is to go back to back to f1 and yeah, pray to survive on the king's side and pray that you will have the time to start rolling the a pawn. Meanwhile, we have well, I don't know for the other sections, but in this section, we already have a sweep. Uh, Volda Murzin from Russia wins his second game after he won his first one, so 2 0. For Volodar and uh, he is he is in the second stage so he, he goes through without need of a tie break yeah right perhaps his opponent just confused something because over here ah right yeah I got it so black actually went for kind of a combination like capturing on capturing on c2 and queen d4 double attacking the bishop and the knight well that let's be honest it doesn't look like it's going to work yeah knight to e4 stops the threat to both pieces and then yeah knight e4 rook e4 is just a, just a piece up for white anyway this game is already finished um let me see the very very young kids let's see if there is something entertaining going on there is obviously something entertaining going on in fact you know in boys under 10 only three games remaining, so it's, it's quite a few games have finished already. And if we talk about the ELO favorite, that, that's quite interesting because despite such a huge uh, rating gap, right? So uh, player with black, Watzlaw Finnick, is once again rated more than 1,000 higher than his opponent. But the game is still on and, and White plays a very nice game, it seems. Like keeping the material equal and he's just barely worse i believe so it's like it you'd expect you know players under 10 to blunder their pieces randomly at least that that's what i would do but no uh, those guys proving me wrong and in fact yeah white plays a very nice game it seems mm, and we uh, we have to talk about such subtle details as like Perhaps Black's bishop on d4 is somewhat better than White's knight on e4, but not more than that. Uh, right, so uh, what to do for Phoenix? Something like rook f4 and then try to move the g-pawn. Mm, yeah, in fact, I don't really think that White is that much worse in this position. Rook to e7, yeah, perhaps rook, uh, rook e7 makes sense. But yeah, interestingly, White perhaps can uh -huh. so white goes knight g4 uh knight g5 i was thinking white could allow himself to go under a self pin so to speak planning for rookie two and possible tricks with knight f6 but yeah but knight g5 also possible bishop f6 knight to f3 right i'd expect white to play knight f3 and uh, be quite solid in fact yeah that's open under 10 girls under 10 quite a few games in progress okay so i do see familiar names uh victoria smetanska the player who mm, played a very long game one but convincingly converted convincingly converted now she has the black pieces let's see what happens there here yeah she was the yellow favorite so rated um 2000 2013 against her unrated opponent but let's be honest in under 10 section the you know ratings sometimes okay if you have a good rating good for you but if you don't it doesn't really mean that much right as i said like first rating i've got i've got it like in being 18 years old so, well times obviously changed since then but still and this perhaps this speech is perhaps for 
for you if you're a parent of a young kid so do not get obsessed with like uh, the rating the figures so well as long as uh, the kid enjoys the game as long as you know he's learning something that that that's a good thing so don't really pay too much attention to his rating progress and so on it will come inevitably uh right speaking of the position again speaking of the position uh well there might be some difficulties for black i want to say white well currently white is down a pawn but uh, i'd say yeah rook takes e5 that's one thing i was thinking bishop f2 would have made sense as well like after knight f5 just yeah just put the bishop on f2 restrict the knight it's very likely that you're getting the e5 pawn anyway right so looked looked quite looked quite nice for white yep rook e5 seems to be playable as well knight h4 there might be some danger of this pin here so not that easy of a task for for the favorite right checking the other games no big things here uh let me see let me see that's um open section under 12 Jakub Seaman, uh, not quite sure, but quite possibly from Poland. I think that's one of the Polish youngsters. Uh, plays this rather sharp position with black. So black, ah no, it's black to move. Then, then apparently it's not that sharp, right? Black is just up an exchange. Uh, for the pawn though, and it's a really, really tense position now i realize because in fact both sides have some attacking intentions so if you somehow inaccurately capture on e4 then white takes your knight on g4 you know white has a check on e6 and it becomes a very very messy position after bishop d7 yeah once again depends on white's ability to develop his pieces quickly yeah of course you can notice that it's black who creates threats but yeah but if white is on time to say play queen d4 and develop the bishop and so on and so on he might as well get tremendous compensation because the rook on a the knight on b8 currently not participating in the game white is very low on time now that i'm now that i'm paying attention white is very very low on time it's quite curious to follow that in some games plays are already deep deep in the end game while here you know it's move 18 so almost like grandmasters so it's a very very nice pattern of spending the time yeah hopefully there won't be any incidents in time trouble like like you know losing a winning position on on time is something that i imagine is very painful especially if you're a young kid but i totally support the idea that yeah thinking comes first and and, and you have to invest your time trying to play the best moves uh right so f3 and what black is supposed to do it's like if you play for development i think we will end up having like white's gonna have a good position so instead black plays queen e5 once again try striving for initiative for like move like queen g3 or queen h2 so on yeah that, that that's a very tense position i i can imagine like two grand masters playing this one quite quite curious this one all right uh let me move to open open under 18 um boys uh, mm, i think yeah yosipenko has already won so board three yeah board three remember as i was saying ukrainian ukrainian kirill shevchenko against naraya helper ramirez despite the elo gap the the rating gap of almost 500 points uh ukrainian player can't really make any substantial progress here and now for instance yeah black on in a way kind of succeeded like gaining some space on the king's side right but at the same time the bishop on g7 is quite passive and white c6 pawn should not be underestimated well in fact Mm, yeah knight c4 is perhaps a fine move because yeah white wants to protect the d5 pawn so that's why you play knight c4 because what i was thinking if you play g4 you kind of bury the bishop on g7 so bishop on g7 can't really participate in the game 
knight c4. So that's a very, very tense match. And I'm wondering if Shevchenko will win despite his huge uh, advantage in rating, or will it go to tiebreak? And I can't even think of Black losing this one, but he might, in fact. Like, if, if you give White a few more moves to, you know, to organize his position, yeah, g4 perhaps is a clever choice to make sure that the bishop, uh, the dark square bishop, at least will have a chance to join the game. So g4, once again, I, I have no clue if it works tactically, right? But at least from positional standpoint, it's quite an understandable decision. So g4, planning for bishop h6, well, perhaps not immediately, but in the nearest future, to have prospects for this bishop on g7. So let me see if there is anything sharp going on on the other board. Not necessarily sharp, but there are some very, very tense matches. Like, for instance, I was not paying attention here. Uh, Samir Sahidi against Justin Wang, for instance, this one. That you know, belongs to Nimtsovich book, perhaps. Like, good bishop versus bad bishop, right? A, bl a bit of blockade, a bit of, like, explanation on structures. So white is obviously better with the better bishop right uh, but yet how do you convert this position with white apparently there is no way there is no no way to make uh, progress in terms of pawn moves the structure is absolutely stagnant and you just you know you just hover around with white without any real hope of making progress uh, i believe this is going to be a draw so once again Pardon my ignorance, but I, yeah, I don't have the merit of checking the result from round one because, you know, in a knockout tournament, it actually explains a lot if you know how did game one finish. So that, that provides you with the information. But as I said, 80 games, guys, 80 games in uh, various age categories, uh, closer to the end of the tournament, where we'll be, we'll be limited to like semi-finals, finals, that they'll be much easier, but day one will inevitably be a bit of a scramble. So let's look at the chess part. Uh, yeah, now I would, I would claim that it's confirmed and Kirill Shevchenko will not win this game. I absolutely cannot imagine Black winning this game. I'm afraid Black might be in danger of losing this game. It's really, really tough for Black. Uh, right, and what I was told, by the way, what I was told by the official, by the organizers, that there are very serious anti-cheating measures in this tournament to such an extent that the result that happens is yet not final. So if there will be any suspicious, uh, suspicious games, suspicious results, the games will be checked by the special commissions overnight and then tomorrow the results are confirmed. Mm, yeah, in our game, Black has offered a draw. So quite a bit of a surprise, right? A grandmaster held for a draw in a second consecutive game. However, White decides to play on. Oh, wow, that's quite a bit of a surprise. And I believe, well, we absolutely have to switch to the other game but I will keep an eye on this one. I'm really curious how this one is going to finish. So that's, that's a, that must be a very, very huge surprise. Yeah. So King F3, and there is no discussion. White is much, much better slash winning. King F3 and then G4, you know, and then Knight F5 and moving on and on. And I believe Black's H pawn is lost as well. So I'm wondering if it if it went wrong and when it went wrong for uh, for Kirill Shevchenko. Yesipenko, by the way, has won his second game in a very funny manner uh, with white, white blundering. So Andrei Yesipenko has already won and knight e5, knight takes d4. Black, uh, white was so paralyzed that he decided to sack a piece and after all that knight f5 has blundered that the rook is pinned and knight f3 actually wins the game however the position was already hopeless uh right let me see perhaps ladies under 18 what happens there okay carissa yip has won so king's indian attack succeeded if you move the queen away then g2 is deadly like 
if you want to check, there were a couple of games of Hikaru Nakamura featuring this idea with G3, G2. Uh, so all the favorites seemingly are through. Arni Van has won as well. Mm, Thalia Cervantes. Oh, well, actually, actually here, it's quite a tense position. So first of all, White is, as well as her opponent, is uh, pretty low on time. Thalia is actually down to one minute. And it's a very, very sharp position there, I have to say. With white having like all the all threats like like d7 followed by bishop yeah like let's imagine the line d7 followed by bishop to a5 and if you take on d7 white might as well go knight g6 right and then knight to f8 or knight e5 and white apparently is winning okay but yeah white didn't spot d7 instead went for bishop a, uh, bishop captures a5 knight d6 rook d1 still seems to be very comfortable for white a white king is somewhat you know somewhat more solid because there'll be f2 f3 move shutting down the bishop's diagonal if needed so looks like a very 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 tense game as well uh right there'll be more and more games disappearing yeah once again apologies i wish i could cover all of them but it's just it's just too many right uh let me see i really feel like i have to be have to be back ah well what a picturesque position in the game of uh, shan uh, sarxian this game has already finished but just look at it like two knights against rook and bishop and five extra pawns for white and, and white i believe checkmates black king no longer in like in three moves four moves next to that one oh okay so that that's still in progress miguel soto against indian um yeah the player with black is much higher rated however his position there I don't think it's better for black at all. I don't think it's better for black at all. Like if you swap the queens, you probably survive with black, but you have no chance of winning this one. And if you, yeah, I think that's what he did, yeah. But now G takes, king goes to G3, captures that. Rook A4 is possible to protect the C pawn. I guess white, is, white does more than okay uh well so potentially we'll have once again some some longish end games like for instance this one uh, where white is winning he's got an extra bishop but remember we were looking at the one one of the games that finished the last right so a two pawn and the weakness and then that there will be some chances perhaps but not really right white king is too close so white will elimin eliminate those pawns one after the other no that that's completely winning for white that's completely winning for white uh, right. On the last board, remember Golami Orimi has won with black. That was quite a quite a long game. Um, ended with uh, opposite colored bishops and rooks, black having two extra pawns. So now white has perhaps has sacrificed the exchange but got more than sufficient compensation, if you ask me. Right, so three pawns and black's king being rather unsafe knight to e4 i believe under the circumstances that's for a change one of the uh, one of the matches where i know the result of game one so under the circumstances this perhaps is the safest move just swap the knights and black doesn't have the luxury of not swapping the knights like in case of knight g4 knight g5 you know this is a threat this is a threat that's just too much so knight e4 just swap those knights and mm -hmm. I mean, how can you lose with white? I mean, apparently white is, objectively white is just winning. But if you concentrate on not losing because of the match situation, it's, of course, very, very easy. Uh, Bishop d7 followed by c6 would be my next moves. Yeah, and I'm still wondering if, um, if Shevchenko is going to save this game. Well, apparently not. You know, we are about to see the biggest upset the biggest surprise 
of um, day one of the finals because it looks to me very very likely that Kirill Shevchenko will get eliminated from the tournament so now white can play knight to e6 and then how do you stop white from advancing the g-pawn not clear right so there is a c-pawn which deflects the king plus the g-pawn which is running right so white obviously is somewhat stranded right it, it's very hard to move his pieces actually after bishop d2 i understand black wants to move the e-pawn forward but yeah but g5 g6 g7 should win as well as simple king g3 stopping the e-pawn if needed and then moving the h-pawn so that's a big big surprise and yeah that's something really really unexpected king to g3 bishop c oh well bishop c4 hitting the d5 pawn yeah well maybe i've overestimated the chances maybe black still has a chance to to make a draw uh right let me see i'll switch to there is a special tab which says running games just to figure out how many games are in progress here so under 10 there's still there's still a couple of games in the in the open section only one in the in the women's section where victoria Schmietanska, in fact is the defending side remember the this girl won uh knight versus bishop ending one of the last games to finish in round one so here she's a defending side but i believe she knows how to make a draw just push the h pawn sacrifice your rook and then win back the rook for the h pawn so that has to be a draw some spectacular end game knowledge oh wow what what a position ladies and gentlemen let's just pay attention <laughs> what a position here yeah white of course is completely winning but still quite a picturesque position with three pawns attacking right three pawns attacking yeah if only black had the king somewhere around the five it would have been or well, it would have been much more tense than that uh well some more uh, more rook end games in different sections all of them looking like a draw uh let me see let me see if there is something uh, not that many games left oh well there th there is a very interesting position uh so it's alisa nur muhammadova presumably from russia against sara moncada korea uh look three pawns each two bishops versus bishop and knights it should be a draw seems like but yeah but white knight got arrested on a6 so i imagine black is much better up to the point that he can bring the king all the way bring the king all the way attack the knight and bring the bishop win the piece win the game so quite curious what how it's going to unfold but yeah once again a very very interesting position so white tries to bring the king himself ah yeah well actually white's gonna be on time yeah so that that's um that's king c3 and knight b4 yeah black is not on time here king goes to e5 king goes to king goes to c3 and then black will have to break through with with the pawns um so i'm switching to kirill shevchenko once again um as i said this seems to be one of the biggest surprises of uh, round one one of the few grandmasters uh, uh, a reminder there are in total eight grandmasters participating in this event and one of them is about to be eliminated it seems so, uh, white is absolutely solid yeah after king e7 one of the moves that win is c7 i believe yeah c7 played you have to play king d7 because bishop a6 runs into knight b6 uh i don't know bishop a6 there was no need for knight f5 knight b6 would have uh, would have won the game on a spot but knight f5 perhaps also does yeah g7 you need to play king f7 and then yeah it's just a disaster impressive impressive performance by naraya helper ramirez eliminating one of uh, 
uh, one of the top seeds from under 18 section i believe this match is over yeah okay so it's so a few more moves and then a few more moves but yeah but now white is completely safe to play knight b6 and then just promote him yeah there is nothing to be done for black absolutely nothing to be done yeah we are up here to to have a long one because for instance from the same section miguel angel soto against inyan uh remember this sharp position where black has swapped the queens and i was claiming white is totally okay white might even be better uh okay a higher rating apparently counts for something because there's still there's still seemingly a chance for black to win black is up a pawn and with four rooks on the board uh, black can keep trying so this might as well be a very very long game mm, right shevchenko is completely lost let me see how many games left uh, well still some games in under 10 boys and girls oh well that that's an interesting game that's an interesting game once again i i have no clue whatsoever what was uh, the result of game one but game two a white seemingly has built a fortress with rook versus queen those are typically very very interesting end games right so you, you just try to keep yeah like after a five you take and you try to keep black king kind of zoned so it it cannot go to e2 attacking your f2 pawn right and as a i mean there's a lot of little subtleties typically in in such positions like you really really have to be clever playing them like for instance you can't really keep passive because they, they inevitably going to be ideas black say bringing the king to g4 and then sacrificing the queen on e3 going king f3 these kind of things so really curious to see how this game's going to finish yeah i wish i could i could follow like 80 games simultaneously because yeah there, there are just too many queen to c4 and i understand that I mean, while i'm watching this end game apparently there are like a lot of other stuff going on but can help it i mean it's so interesting yeah king king g4 ah what's funny i mean you go king g4 and you might as well lose after rook a5 because rook g5 is such a threat whoa so you have to be careful with, with with moves like king g4 and apparently you should start by moving the queen so that you have a check on f3 yeah queen c2 was oops no 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 not queen c3 of course yeah queen c2 was played white went with a check on a5 and yeah obviously black didn't blunder a checkmate in one right white uh sorry black by the way does make some progress so the king is getting closer and closer so now the real question will be will black will be able to cross the third rank so when the number of pawns is equal it typically is achieved with king to d4 which is already played rook is on a3 and then in the right moment and then you know it's easier said than done but in the right moment you are supposed to play yeah like queen d1's okay rook e3 and then you're supposed to play queen d3 making sure that white cannot go to a pawn ending and then you cross the third rank but yeah but imagine solving some of this kind of a puzzle being on two minutes on you know internet rapid game under stress in front of your in front of your machine so of course it's a very very hard task to accomplish mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of fortresses, that, that that one we consider to be some sort of a fortress. Speaking of fortresses, in open tournament under 12, we have player with white pieces apparently trying to build the fortress here. Mm, you know, somewhat kind of remotely reminds me of times when Karyakin was playing World Championship against Magnus Carlsen and one of the games he actually managed to build some sort of a fortress being a couple of pawns down in well in the end game with a similar material so Carlsen had a pair of bishops and Karyakin bishop and knight so here however I believe this is not a fortress I'm I'm actually kind of puzzled why exactly black decided to go bishop b6 because after bishop g3 uh after bishop g2 and knight g3 it does seem that white doesn't have a next move it would have been 
it wouldn't have been a fortress. It would be winning for, for black because what's the next move for white? White doesn't have a next move. All right. But black apparently finds another way to deal with it. So he is trying to bring the king to a4 and b3, obviously not dropping the e4 pawn. So bishop f5 is going to be played now. The so bishop to f5, bishop to g3 next move, by the way, a threat to h4 pawn, which might as well be not that relevant okay that, that that's a very very tricky fortress you'll still have to work in order to win this one that's that's so interesting mm, right okay i guess yeah victoria mirkulova loses with the queen against the rook it seems okay it's no longer queen against the rook yeah it's just completely winning for black yeah the pawn promotes uh let me see if there are any other okay that that that's a kind of an interesting end game pawn uh, sorry uh, a piece down but with very limited number of pawns and white still having some hopes of uh, of saving it but i don't really think it works you just bring the king over here right and target the f2 pawn black actually but seemingly plans to win it in some other fashion or maybe just putting the bishop on f3 first it perhaps makes sense yeah so you put the bishop to f3 then you eliminate the h pawn and then you're coming all the way back to e1 all right so how many games do we have it's actually it's actually almost almost everything's finished let me see Ah, oh, we have a couple of games is in uh, ladies under 18. So a rook ending for Elizaveta Solozhenkina. Uh, well, has to be completely winning, right? Black will lose his g7 pawn. If you keep the rook here, the result... Ah, oh, no. Okay. Rook g2 was actually played and white replied with rook a8. Uh, why rook a8? So the trick here is that you give a check. The trick here is that you give a check and either you take on g7 with a check or you take it for free, right? Um, yeah, I, th I think, yeah, white later returned to the same position. Yeah, of course, completely winning. Here, Anne Marie Mertz against Yan Changji. Uh, pardon me if I mispronounce it. White is two pawns up, but I believe this has to be completely drawish position because. One pawn is blocked, the other one is blocked as well. Uh, black might just hover with the bishop here and there. Uh, has to watch out for this king not to get to b6, otherwise there will be some chances, right? So chances for white, try to get the king to b6. Uh, we, we might as well look at this one. It might be a very, very instructive endgame. So king goes to b6. Black will be forced to protect the pawn with the bishop. And then you, you, you go for some g4. Should be a draw nevertheless, but, you know, the chances are still there. Chances are still there. So how many games are there, I'm asking myself. Uh, still quite a few. This fortress still holds strong. You'd be, you'd be surprised because, look, the h pawn is lost now. The h pawn is lost, but still black kind of unable to create more past pawns. But finally, finally, black's going to win. So now the king's going go, going to go through, right? So knight g3, and then you pass with, that's kind of play a pass move with black. And yeah, yeah. and then white has to move one of his pieces, basically letting your pieces in, letting your pieces in. So black will will eventually win this one. But I have to say, I mean, first of all, very good fight from white. And at the same time, really, really nice technique from black, it seems. Because like shifting the king from one wing to the other, like king went to a4, provoked some kind of some concessions, like white lost the h pawn. Then uh, king came all the way back to e6. That's the current position here. Mm, still not obvious, right? I mean, if if I'm perfectly honest, I think there should have been like easier ways of doing this. Now, one of the things you can do, yeah, go bishop a4, c2, d3, make sure there's no obstacle in the light square, 
light's quest and then return with the king to b3 okay okay let me see mm, this is uh, one of those positions that we were discussing so black is a piece up and i believe completely winning this time right black's completely winning this time till such a degree that black uh, sorry that black can actually play bishop e2 right bishop c2 was the decision yeah bishop c2 is is good enough yeah yeah here in fact it's a surprise that white is still playing hoping for some sort of a stalemate miracle yeah like I mean, you, pr you probably do not resign here, even though, yeah, it's, it's completely lost position, but bishop d5, and, but what's that? Why bishop c3? Don't quite understand it. It's kind of forcing the king to g1 and then playing bishop d4. Okay. Could it be that black doesn't know how to checkmate with <laughs> with a pair of bishops? Not really. Ah, okay. So now, as, as you remember, guys, from game one, the the moves will come in like in big chunks so we'll have to um just you know switch from game to game and it'll be a lot of moves popping on a, on a board in one go king g2 yeah your task is just to play bishop h4 and then the the e pawn goes uh right let me see ah the fortress the fortress that's once again a reminder that's an open tournament under 12. <laughs> black is still unable to break the fortress despite being how many two pawns up and technically even three because oh wow that's well that's a mistake i have to say i think that was mm, that was an unfortunate decision by white to to actually play this b3 and open up some more squares for uh black king to penetrate because now one of the things black can do is just play bishop e5 right hit the pawn and yeah, you you won't be able to to maintain the blockade. So was it good or bad? But White actually had to try to keep had to try to keep uh, the pawn on B two. Interestingly, Black decided to play Bishop C five, which is well, perhaps it wins, but it's not the move that automatically comes into your mind right like bishop c5 exchanging yeah i do understand you want to exchange the the, the kind of the blockading piece the bishop on e3 which was uh, the pain for quite some time so, so that basically the obstacle which wouldn't let you move your pawns right but how about yeah well actually very clever move bishop c2 because white already was threatening to capture on f3 in some cases so black really made it hard for himself even though he absolutely has to be winning right like like move the king here right king d5 e5 and then take take the g pawn but he really confused himself i believe this he didn't have to really didn't have to play it didn't have to swap the bishops mm, okay the knight's already on h2 that means uh, that means black can capture on c3 is that right yeah, black can capture on c3, and it'd be three extra pawns, right? Ah, uh, yeah, and the problem for white is that he absolutely doesn't have any kind of contemplate because the moment you capture on h7 means your knight is too far and black is winning with g3, uh, sorry, with f2, king f2, king d2, and then the e pawn marches. So I think, yeah think from, from from then on there shouldn't be shouldn't be any difficulties ah by the way i've completely forgotten but there is still a game under uh under 10 going on um mainly because of the interruption it seems on move 34 arbiter adjusted uh the clock it seems arbiter has adjusted the clock right so here a3 knight d5 you play here right you play knight d5 and and you you win the d7 pawn and you have very good chances of winning it with black 
quite impressed. Yeah, well, actually, I'm quite impressed. I have to say that even under 10, under 12, there are still games going on. And yeah, okay. Actually, I think here, coming back to this fortress, which is no longer a fortress, but another type of blockade, I think Black Mist played it finally. And I'm no longer sure if it's winning for Black at all. Well, apparently it is, but he made it very, very hard for himself. Now you need your king to get to f5 somehow. Uh, yeah, that that's that's really confusing. And imagine, I say, the kind of the destiny of the match depending on Black winning or not winning this endgame. That be that be quite a uh, you know quite an upset, right? Kingy tree. Yeah. Now you crawl with your king like here and here. Yeah, knight g2, yeah, still you play that one, you try to get the king. Bishop has nothing to do on f5, in fact. Bishop has to be somewhere around f3, and then you try to get the king to like f5 or f4. Mm, so two games left, this one and um, the game under 10, where only 48 moves played, so apparently Arbiter was uh, adjusting the clock. Yeah, right at the very beginning there was there was a pause and then uh-huh and then there was uh, the clock was stopped the game was stopped because now now I'm paying attention to it. it's like 49 moves only and players still have a lot of time so that means this game being interrupted at some point right and now black being up a pawn should be winning here but you know that still requires some technique. White actually, um, maybe it's not even winning. Like, white can try to get the king to attack the pawn here. I mean, black certainly has winning chances. That, that'd that be a proper way to put it. So check. I wonder if swapping the rook saves. Intuitively, I would, I would prefer to keep the rooks on the board, but I'm not sure if you, if you can anymore because rook d3 is a huge threat it's like now the choice is you swap the rooks which is i mean it might bring you closer to a draw but it might as well just lose on the spot right so it depends on the evaluation of this end game for instance and then something along the lines of bishop f8 and king b4 trying to run to a6 pawn or if you don't swap the rooks and that's what happened in the game that white has to play rook g1 a very passive move but it stops rook d3 rook g3 thing Right, so this will go on here, white. Uh, that's another twist in this game. So a reminder, that's the game where for almost 50 moves, black was struggling to break through the fortress. Eventually he did. And somewhere around this point, and this point, that's move number 100 I'm talking about, right? Somewhere around move number 100, there was still, you know, the, the, there was still tension and it was not clear if black is winning or not so eventually now i'm ready to claim that it's a winning position the one that they have on the board right now but with so many misses already i would not bet on black winning this one and yeah this happens to be happens to be quite a long round too well could it be because of online because my previous experience commentating those rapid events you know 15 plus 10 typically does not last that long and here it's you know the, the second round being already for more than one hour and we really have to start preparing for our magellans that i believe there will be quite a lot of those uh, actually, I don't know what, what I'm going to do about these Armageddons. I'm guessing we will watch like one or two Blitz games from the older groups, right? I believe that, that that'd be fair at least. So we will watch a couple of games from the older groups. All right, so uh, here, I mean, it, it, it wins automatically. You just have to be a little bit careful not to let those pawns be blockaded, right? So a check from f3, I suggest, and try to sneak in to g4 with the king. So two games left. So bishop f3 played, by the way. Uh, right, two games left, but here I believe black 
is completely uh, completely winning now because he wins a second pawn on g4 yeah rook takes g4 plate check mm. that's tricky though because in a tournament game what i would do i would try to calculate if a move like king e6 which honestly is much more natural move to keep your king next to your past pawns right so king e6 if it would win on a spot after rook a7 so you allow the con to play but the king supports the pawns and after king c6 oh well maybe king c6 is just a better move let me be let me be honest yeah rook h6 was somewhat worrisome but at the same time uh black has black is just on time with rook f4 now in case of bishop d2 he has a check and then g4 right in case of bishop f3 he has knight g4 yeah yeah bishop d2 plate yeah check very important and then not to blunt the g g5 pawn so a check plus g4 and black is completely winning but is completely winning in this position as well for already like 70 moves but he still struggles to do it so I'm really impressed. I mean, not only with uh, how long this is going to last, but also with stubbornness uh, player with the white pieces has shown. Because let's be let's be honest, that is the position which was on the board 70, 70 moves ago. And most of us, me included, would just fall apart with white. White's position is already kind of hopeless, right? Yeah. But the game still goes on and white comes up with a very funny resource knight to g4 knight to g4 hoping for black to take where he takes back with the king and eliminate the last pawn therefore achieving a draw interestingly okay bishop f5 i was thinking of h4 check this very moment but yeah bishop f5 should be fine as well okay um so knight to knight to h2 so still not not very easy right so king e4 king e4 or that's still tricky king e4 knight f3 is it winning at all <laughs> i mean i'm starting to doubt myself no, i mean it, it has to be it, it's a completely winning position Let, let's let's uh, stop kidding here but yeah you can imagine how tough it's been for black right who already performed like the very good technical task yeah h4 brilliant move then connect your stuff go king e4 go king f4 once again guys very important well actually this one i do not approve even though it's winning but get your king closer to your pawns it's very important that the light square bishop is controlling h1 so the same motif once again right so the rook pawn and uh all righty that by the way is the last game of um of the second that's a last game of the second game of round one i i don't have uh, better ways to put it so there will be a very very short break as soon as this game finishes and i will have to you know quickly reset everything to watch the armageddon's there will be a lot of tie breaks i believe well not such a lot as i was informed but i imagine in all the age groups there will be quite a few and as i said in the blitz i won't be really won't be able to switch from one game to the other but at least i am hopeful to be able to watch a few of them so now g3 followed by h3 right should win on a spot yeah h3 just go h3 well technically i imagine bishop d5 is just a better move because it, it's gonna be faster right so h3 obviously wins but bishop d5 might be kind of faster a three knight f1 yeah and then just pass and don't play bishop g2 please because bishop bishop g2 knight g3 is a draw that's the only way to make a draw right and still white is kind of fighting that, that, that that's an incredible game what can i say yeah but finally finally king to e3 and black is winning 
Knight F1, take the horsey. That's funny. That's funny. Bishop F1 and Black eventually has won. So apologies, but I have to run for a very, very, very quick break just to reset everything so that we have a chance to watch the games from the Armageddon, the tie breaks. So we'll be back shortly.
Welcome back, everyone. We are getting ready for the tie breaks of the day one of FIDE Online World Cadet and Youth Championship. Uh, right, as I said, it was quite challenging for me to follow those all 80 games. And yeah, apologies if I've missed uh, a game that you particularly were interested to look at. But yeah, can't help it really. So now it will be even more challenging task because apparently we have quite a few Armageddon tie breaks. And with, to me at least, the most the most surprising one being Gukesh, who apparently didn't win. Uh, well, let me see. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. That 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 that's wrong. What I'm saying. I guess that that's a pairing for the next round. Oh well, that that's even more confusing. Well, let me see. Let me see if I do have the link for the tiebreaks because that that's something something really confusing. There should be Armageddon's at least a few of them, but really, uh, what I'm seemingly getting there are the pairings for the next round instead. Uh, that's a, that's an awkward situation, I have to say. Perhaps we'll ask uh, for the help because hopefully they, they didn't start yet. But Yeah, one moment. I, I need to check it because it seems it seems I have it wrong and I have the games from the next round instead. But there are certainly tie breaks in many, many sections. Yeah, so once again, apologies. I'll try to solve it in a second. Uh, right, that's once again, apologies for that. Yeah, by the way, as I was saying, I was not able to cover all 80 games, but you can at least check the results and the PGN itself on the official site world2020.ge. Yeah, this tournament uh, with, you know, with representatives of all continents, basically, all these strong youth players, uh, yeah, is organized by FIDE with partnership with Georgian Chess Federation as of course the sponsor Gazprom, the general partner of the event. Uh, let's see if I can do anything about the links. I'm really, 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 really confused because I was hoping for it to work, but apparently it doesn't. So really, really yeah, the links I'm having are the links for the next round, the round that will happen tomorrow, but I don't really see where the tiebreak links are. Hopefully I'm not missing out and then tiebreak is not yet started because otherwise it, it's, it's really, really, really really confusing yeah apologies for that dear people but yeah if, if if you don't have it you don't have it you know uh right we're all learning guys we're all learning to organize chess online to commentate on chess online and so on and so on so once again apologies uh, yeah Can't really see any. Okay, let me see.
No, nothing. Nothing. That's the only available game I have. I mean, actually, you can't, you can't really see it. Mm, yeah, so let me try to do it one more time. And once again, apologies for my technical dumbness. So what I should do is this, apparently. Should do is this. And hope for this to work, right? As nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Um, yeah, there is this game listed, but um, I don't quite understand if it started yet. So you'll have to bear with me, guys. But um, for the time being, I, Im I imagine, honestly, I imagine the the blitz. Ah, no. OK, so at least, at least I figured out it didn't yet start it. So at least we didn't meet, we didn't miss the action. So that's, uh, that's quite relieving. So I'm being clumsy. Apologies for that, but at least we will see a couple of a couple of tie breaks at least. Okay, hopefully, if everything works according to plan. If everything works according to plan, aha. Uh -huh. So, okay. So what I have is apparently a tiebreak which is about to start, as far as I understand, in the tournament of girls under ten. So let's see if it will start on time. So for the time being, it does not reflect the time settings correctly. It doesn't reflect any time settings. Uh, the Armageddon is used for the tiebreak in this tournament, which is, uh, well, by that point, you probably already know that's one decisive game where white has an extra minute and black has the draw odds. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this is going to work now. That's my secret hope. Under 14, let's see if we have anything planned in under 14 games. Not really clear. Okay, yeah, seemingly getting something. We'll see, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps uh, it will be somewhat delayed. So uh, maybe once again a short break just to figure out if if I will have everything set properly. Because um, as you can guys, as you guys can see, I'm I'm quite nervous here with, with all the tech.
So it seems that we all set for the tiebreak. Once again, apologies. It went pretty scrambled the first day. As I said, a lot of games, a lot of categories. So just imagine 160 players today, 80 games simultaneously. Oof, luckily for me, not all of them went to the tiebreak, but still, you know, when we are talking about Armageddon, one can imagine it's really, really hard to switch even between two games. I'll make a very, you know, very ambitious attempt to do so. So there is one tiebreak in boys on the 18 section or open on the 18 section. So Mm, the the games are about to start. So it's uh, Francesco Sonis rated twenty four eighty three was held to a tie in by the end of two rapid games by Ron Talogdar, uh, rated twenty three forty. So an elbow favorite failed to beat an underdog, and then it's in under open under fourteen. Yeah, open under, no, pardon me, open under 16. Uh, there was a very spectacular game, a win by Dmitry Kuchko with White, I believe, right? It was a win by Dmitry Kuchko with White in some Kinzindian that I think we might be following. Apparently, the match finished in 1 1, and then we might want to follow, you know, the, the playoffs. So let's see, let's see. I hope that now I have everything correct and we can follow the games. Uh, there are even like little girls under 10 had uh, in their matches, one of the matches were tied as well, was tied as well. So, so I'm really curious to me. I'm, I really hope everything's going to work so for, at first place. And yeah, let me let me check uh, to confirm if uh, the games are starting. Right. So once again, yeah, I'm hoping this should reflect the clock. For some reason doesn't really do so. No. Nah. Okay, okay, so as soon as the game's going to start, I believe I'll be able to show them. So for now, let's once again, let's think of, oh, well, actually, I have a cross table here. Uh, you guys can check the cross, ba uh, cross table on world2020.ge. Mm, for some reason, I'm kind of still unable to see anything which is which is really annoying because i'm informed that everything has started but i still have the starting positions everywhere Okay. Well, I really don't know what to say, guys. Uh, I do have the games list. I do have, I do have the games list, but nothing happens. So I really wonder: is it, is it my fault, or they didn't start the playoff yet? Okay. What can we do? Just patiently sit and wait. So one more time, uh, let me check, let me check what, what happened. Let me check the results. Uh, so we'll start with open 18. So results of round one. Do we actually have any, any tie breaks in? Mm, yeah, Yesipenko convincingly won 2-0, I believe. Yeah, by the way, 
mm, let's not forget the highest rated player not only in under 18 section but as you would expect in the whole tournament Andrei Sipenko 2686 it's him and Michal Sarin two players being over 2600 then you have or rather should I say you had my compatriot Kirill Shevchenko who just got eliminated from the tournament would you would you believe I guess at least he got eliminated from the tournament that that's what I thought that's that's what I thought yeah uh, uh Shant Sarksyan has won 2 nil and let me check if there are any it looks unlikely that that there are any any tiebreaks here okay 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 still didn't start it the armageddon the tiebreak looks like uh, it's gonna take a while so pardon me we'll have to once again we'll have to wait perhaps a little bit of starts once again so it all started with uh, 1380 if i'm not mistaken participants chosen from literally everywhere and but there was a limitation like for each in each category for each federation unless some spe special achievements like for instance we have three representatives of united states of america in uh, girls under 18 because yeah they, they, those are top three seats right but basically limited to the very very best place in the world very very best young players in the world and it ended up yeah after the qualification stage 160 players so easy to divide eight categories 10 uh, well no not like that five age categories for open section and women's section so 16 players in each right 16 players in each and today imagine the full pool of the players will be caught in half it's quite sad well especially if like like for those younger players i can imagine it's quite sad uh, you getting eliminated but yeah that's that's the nature of our knockout tournaments i personally i would i would give everyone a medal but yeah that's not how the competitive chess works regrettably Mm, yeah okay let me let me check more results uh -huh. and we finally do have at least connection to one tiebreak i mean I, I, I don't know if it's the only one but i finally spotted move <laughs> i finally spotted the move so let's just not waste any time and and, and try to watch what, what what we have which actually happens to be actually happens to be the tie break between two girls under 10 so very very little ladies yeah i hope we can we do have connection with the board and we can we can actually show something on the screen Mm, yeah so once again white started with 10 minutes oh, pardon me with five minutes with one extra minute right five versus four and no increment to like move 60 but for that white has to win for it's kind of the repay for this extra minute is what white has to win and black can set uh, can be satisfied with a draw in case of a draw it it's a player with the black pieces who advances into next round uh right so for the time being not that much to discuss right so white should consider playing d5 and b better d5 a4 knight c4 is the setup white is looking for in these situations alternatively white could have considered capturing only five and fighting for the d5 square with the piece but yeah I do prefer d5 more space for white you know more control yeah a4 well actually if yeah if it wouldn't be online I would 
you know, make this silly joke that they are they are listening to my broadcast and you know they are playing in a, in a venue next to the commentary booth. Right now, but yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, A4, A5, of course, yeah, we have to agree, not ideal. I'm trying to stop white advancing the A5 pawn, um, the, the A pawn to A5, but at the same time creating a lot of light square weaknesses. I mean, no, no question about it. So knight to C4, and you know what? White apparently is ready to play B2, B4 as soon as the moment comes. Bishop d2, perhaps already preparing b2, b4. Mm, I also, I can imagine vacating the square for the knight on e3. Black decided to capture on c4, which is, believe it or not, not the greatest of ideas. But yeah, but you also have to control the time. Of course, that's a lot of, lot of pressure, a lot of tasks on the players. So let's not let's not bl blame them if they they play something not very precise um if you'd like we could switch to a, lo a little bit let's say a, a little bit higher level game right there is a game going on in under 14 section also quite interesting i mean yeah let, let let's try to watch both of those so that's um Boys on the on the 14 once again finish the two two rapid games one one so once again in need of a tie break and here once yeah well that, that, that that's a quite a funny opening choice right so white kind of plays it all over the place a little bit of a ready opening a little bit of b3 e3 and tops it up with h4 h5 like alpha zero ideas of pushing the h pawn up the board. Mm, that's quite interesting once again i don't think white necessarily gets the advantage this way oh, well f3 pardon me but i don't like the move i don't really like the move f3 even though even though this knight on g4 now is in trouble bishop b4 queen e2 yeah how do you protect knight on g4 there is also rook h4 to add to that mm, yeah i'm afraid it's like f3 looked a little bit strange but perhaps perhaps I have to take back the my words about f3 not being good because yeah the knight on g4 is hanging in the air that's the current position here the knight is still in trouble black had to trade on c3 so now rook h rook h4 g5 but do we care all that much about this uh perhaps we do it's a very tense game in fact in fact it's a very tense game uh well white already has lost his advantage his time advantage barn so obviously yeah this extra minute is quite handy at the very beginning but mm, yeah using this time you're kind of supposed to get the advantage the position in the advantage on the position which i'm not uh, not sure white has gotten 94 is one tempting option Mm, there is a natural move like rook e8. The knight on g4 indeed is somewhat, you know, somewhat in the air. And I presume rook e8, white is meeting with knight e5. Let me see if I have any other games. Not really. Aha, so third decision, bishop to f5. But doesn't this one run into rook h4? Well, apparently black is ready to play queen d7 just to protect the, protect the knight. So the main conflict here, will this knight survive on g4 or not? Will white be able to, you know, to open the scope of the c3 bishop? Well, well basically, if the bishop on c3, now on b2, is it good or not? Because nobody knows, right? I mean, if the diagonal gets open combined with the pawn on h6, that's a, that's a very, very dangerous bishop. That's a very, you know, if the queen ever gets to this diagonal. But for the time being, it doesn't look like so it looks like black is perfectly in control yeah and these things inevitably will happen pardon for that but these things will happen so moves sometimes coming in you know in bunches kind of oh wow well, well, well. no 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 now it's clear it's bad right now it's clear it's bad so black apparently just um just blundered rook h4 and the knight got trapped this knight got trapped and yeah and eventually everything's okay so the games are starting we have more and more of those armageddons going on it's just that how do you follow all of them 
that's the problem, right? So currently I can see three happening at the same time. Uh, right, so here, I mean, white is up a piece. So I call it that white is winning and okay, we'll be surprised if something else gonna happen and I'm switching to boys under 16, right? That's the one. Yeah, and that's the that's the players that we've seen Dmitry Kuchko winning this nice game against the Kings Indian. Remember the checkmate at the very end, sacrificing the queen on a fade. So now he has the black pieces. He has played a tricky, uh, or rather white played a tricky line against the Birk, the Birk defense after f3, yeah, e5, d5, bishop e7, bishop e3, knight h5, yeah, knight h5 is fine, a5, so black acts like, um, like he, like he would in the King's Indian. A, uh, I mean, a5, knight, a6, like bishop on g5 is quite active, g3 and bishop back to e7. I'm not sure about bishop back to e7, but on the other hand, f4 was clearly threatening, right? So he apparently had to react this way or another. So bishop to e7, knight e2, knight c5. And now, mm, yeah, white really has to decide on what to do next. Bishop g2 doesn't really appeal to me. It doesn't really appear to me. I guess in this case, black might as well switch to the real Kings India setup, go g6 and try to play for f5. So as white, I would probably try to castle short. Uh, sorry, that's what white is trying to do, castling short. I, I would try to castle long and, you know, to go g4. Let's not forget that white is the side who has to win in this game. f5 seems quite premature because after e5, you can't really take g4 wins a piece. So that's, wow, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. Yeah, and now, yeah. <laughs> when I said, you know, when I said we won't be able to follow now, even more games starting at the same time. By the way, uh, under 10, game under between the girls under 10 has already finished. White won apparently on time because Black's position, Black's final position is much better. Right, what happens here? F5, White for some reason decided not to take, castled, F takes, F takes. Yeah, that's probably just not on time to return back and not on time to switch between the games. Let's accept it, guys. Let's look at this one. Let's look at this one. So now we are talking, um, I want to say, improved Kings Indian for black because in the Kings Indian, this bishop on is typically on g7, doesn't do anything. Bishop on e7 at least has prospects to go to g5. So queen e8 plus the fact that uh, black didn't play g6 allows the queen to go to g6 or potentially even h5. This exchange on c5, I've tried it myself, honestly. I mean, it looks like you spoil the pawn structure a bit and the dark square bishop is stupid, but believe me, if this bishop ever gets to e3, d4, you might as well regret taking the knight on c5. It's a very tense and very, very unclear position. Knight to f3. Mm, well, not sure what to, uh, what to suggest. You can go knight g5, in fact, and then if white takes bishop d6, you know, so sacrificing the pawn, but you, you're targeting g3. Uh, like this, yeah, black just prefer to keep everything solid, everything simple. Knight h4, yeah, that's that's a soft spot in, in, in black's position. This knight is heading to f5. That's actually a very, very nice play. Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, g6, king g7, probably still solid enough for black, right? King to g7, just to keep g6 protected. Yep, bishop f3 wants to play bishop g4, exchange the light square bishops. I wonder if uh, black has to play h5 here or allow bishop g4. If anything, yeah, I mean, you can always return to f6. That's That's exactly what what I thought. Yeah, just return to f6 and you cover g4, you cover h5. Uh, it has to be said that the white knight on c3 was not doing much. So actually, I've just missed it. White already has played knight d1 and knight e3, right? 
So let me see, there are more and more games going and, and already some results. Um, like for instance, I don't quite understand how White lost in this position either than on time. So White did lose on time and in, in 87 moves out of which we, we couldn't see a single one, regrettably. But yeah, but let's go back to this one. Can't help it, we will have to follow that. So King G7, uh, white kind of got stuck a little bit, right? Which is underlined by his last moves. Queen to D3 and back to E2. Queen to D3 and back to E2. So now I'm wondering how much time is added because I I I said like after after 60 moves you have you have addition of 2 seconds did I did I get it wrong because otherwise how do you lose on time well perhaps perhaps you can right because it's 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 on online chess it's online chess anyway uh, yeah, as you can see, from positional standpoint, White really got stuck, right? There is no way to make progress. I'm, I'm wondering if you actually do play knight g4 or bishop g4. He did, yeah? Knight g4, knight g8, b3, queen e7. Yeah, I can't help it. As you can see, though, those moves, they are coming in. Like, yeah, updates not in... A... Um, not after each move yet, but take some time to update and all of a sudden, oops, like in series. So A4 takes, takes. Not sure why, why would you take on A4 as white? Like you're ruining your structure unless you have some plan of invading F5, which apparently is not the case. Mm, 20 seconds left for black. Reminded there is no increment, so, so that's okay. Rook a8. Solid here. Oops. Another three, four moves coming at the same time. Right. But now you just swap the rooks, you go a4, and white is finally like close to winning. White is finally close to winning. Uh, well, actually, here, black could have just taken, it seems. Could have taken on b5, but he decided for queen a5. More moves. Sorry, that, that's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, let me see. There are some games in progress still. I can see some. Including, um, including open under 18. Okay, here it seems, yeah, White did win and he has won on time. So I'm switching to this one and this perhaps will be my last tiebreak game that I will follow. Uh, that was, yeah, I was keeping an eye on this one while not putting it on the screen. That was quite interesting. Who will, you know, who get checkmated first? Because <laughs> at some point there was, there was this position where White is practically checkmated, and then yet it was Black who got checkmated. After that, it was F3, and I don't know if there was there was any way to run away, but Black has played Bishop H3, and Queen H4 concluded the game in White's favor. So that's quite a drama, but once again, it's the nature of those Armageddon playoffs. Doesn't matter if it's played over the board or on internet right let me see if i have the access to any other games that are going i don't think so 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 i think that's it we could try to go through this one because this seems to be a very very entertaining game that we've missed right and also of a very high level so that's under 18 um, open section and yeah as you can see the player who has won uh, francesco sonis is rated 2480 right so i'll fast forward the opening once again that's uh, symmetrical 
Grunfeld and yeah, and the funny move C3. So that's you know, it's, it's a bit of a tricky move. So you're practically saying, okay, I'm, I have no intentions to play for an advantage. I just want a solid position and I want you to play, kind of to play with black, but have a tempo less, which is not a bad approach, which is not a bad approach if you need to win and you are, and, and you have one more minute. So pressure on your opponent, let him try to figure out what's happening, just develop naturally. Okay, knight d2, bishop b7, knight d5 makes a lot of sense. Knight d3, okay, knight d3, I'm not sure if I'm supporting all that wall hardly. Queen to c7, e5, now it's clear that black has a very good position. Jokes aside, yeah, black is, I believe black is just much better. a6 was not needed. Typically in such positions, what you want to do is jump your knight to e4, perhaps previously playing something like rook to d8 a6 queen b3 and this is where it starts to be somewhat tricky right because you did create weaknesses for yourself here rook c8 however still come look at it black is better no doubt absolutely zero doubt black is better and black was better perhaps till the end of the game till the moment that he has blundered the checkmate okay that was okay somewhere around this point i would expect black had a better choices f5 looks very promising g4 it's fine c4 now black simply had to bring the queen which he didn't before bishop c3 don't you agree, guys? Black, Black's position lo uh, look completely winning. Should be five, bishop c3, queen e5. Yeah, okay. Trade. Why would he trade? King g7. And he probably blundered g4. That's the trick. He blundered queen d7 and queen g4. Or he was thinking that he is winning. Yeah, queen h5, rook e1. And maybe rightly so. Maybe rightly so. Bishop c8. Rook d5, give a check. Yeah, I feel honestly, I feel disappointed for for the player with the black pieces because he was he was playing a very very nice game and and, and yet he lost. Right, and and the final blunder involved queen takes rook to d7, queen f4, f3, as we said. And here, I don't know if black has the move. Doesn't doesn't seem to be very likely. Bishop h3 has blundered a checkmate in one. Okay, so I think this will be, let me see if I didn't miss anything. Let me see if I didn't miss anything, but I think this will be it for today. Or not really. Ah, hang on a second. We have one more game which has just started. Apparently, it's very tricky to handle those Armageddons. So, one more game up because I thought maybe that's a you know it's a mistake on my side and the game is not going. And I thought, okay, let's leave it aside. But no, it's just started. So it's Anthony here against Frederick Swane. I'm wondering if Frederick is the brother of Rasmus Swane, the favor uh, grandmaster. All right, so this game has just started. Okay, uh, I was also informed that apparently the, the, what, there was a bit, a, a bit of a problem on the on the platform with the clock, and therefore, you know, the, therefore the Armageddon got somewhat delayed. Because I, I, I was expected to be, I was expecting to be done by that point. But yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, right. So what happens here? That's once again, boys under under sixteen, so quite qualified players. Uh, black to move. I'm taking on d4. Yeah, all day, every day. That's what I wanted to say. Honestly, perhaps I can claim somewhat more experience so here. I wouldn't go for the opposite colors, even though it's absolutely okay. I would have taken on d4 with the bishop and then go queen b4 in order to swap the queens as well. But yeah, of course, 
that still, if any side is better here, it's black, in fact, and spoiler, no, no, no one's, no one's better here. And knowing that white needs to win in order to win the match, knowing that this, this is an Armageddon game, makes, of course, white's task exceptionally difficult, like almost impossible. Yeah, right. So, so you take d5, your opponent takes d4, right? As simple as that. I don't really see if white can do anything about it. Don't really see if white can... Yeah, let's see. Okay, at least he keeps the queens. Keeps the queens once again. White, uh, well, not even a hand on the clock. So once again, a reminder, he starts with an extra minute, but doesn't really matter, right? You have to keep the game going. You have to, uh, you have to keep the game going. So like sacrificing the pawn or, or just letting the pawn go, basically. It's, it's not the type of uh, move that you call a pawn sacrifice, but you absolutely need to try to create some threats. Okay, so white traded on d4, uh, on d5, yeah, rook b8. And once again, if any side is better here, it's black. Mm, I'm about to change my mind, guys, because after rook d4, there is rook b1, and at, at least white is white is a pawn up. Right, you, you probably never win such, because rook f1... And then black plays a move like h5, for instance, and, and how on earth, yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, it's black who might be better still. I mean, it, it doesn't matter for this particular game, but it might be black who is better. It might be black who is better there. Oh, well, and, and since white has lost the f2 pawn, black is clearly better. But yeah, White uh, could not be satisfied with the draw. So it's uh, his decision to try to change the position is quite understandable. But yeah, but now G5, G5, G4, and, and Black's, uh, yeah. Just go back to G7, play F5. Or go to E7, yeah, once again. So I believe by that point we can conclude that Frederick Swanee uh, will not lose this one. I wonder how it's limited in this tournament because, uh, well, once upon a time being a chess player myself, I remember some not so nice looking stories like, you know, in such endgame. No, once again, I do not expect it from, from these young players, but imagine in this kind of end game and then one of the players continues to play simply because he has like 10 seconds more on the clock and that's you know that's the ugly face of armageddon chess but yeah but here of course doesn't make any sense right doesn't make any any sense uh, so now the pawns are exchanging will be please don't play guys please don't play it's it's not you know it's not the position which you want to play for a win Seriously? I mean, yeah, I understand. It's it's a World Cup and everything, but uh, let's be just just let's give this game just a little bit more respect. Yeah, the game has finished. It is a draw, right? So for Rick Swanee goes into the next round, and once again, let me see if anything. If anything is still left, I was told that, in fact, boys under 10 are still competing. Let me see. Currently, I'll have to, next time I'll have to improve my on my skills of, um, you know, updating the PGN on time. So, let me see. Uh, let me see if, if yep. Uh, yep. No, not really. I don't see anything. Unless, unless this game didn't start yet. 
yeah, what I can see is a lot of games that have finished, but I don't really see any any in progress. Oh, well, there is one. There is one, and it's going on at full swing. So, uh, well, there, there, there were, you know, there's a lot of things happened. That, that, like White stopped the clocks, Black started the clock again, Arbiter stopped the clock for 287 seconds. And that's why... That's why the game is still going because it was stopped for like 10, five minutes. Mm, yeah, they should, you know, <laughs> try to try to set it a little bit better. Those are my guidance because it is very confusing, I imagine, for the players, especially for such a young ones. All right, once again, white has to win. Black is satisfied with a draw. Black is already up a pawn. I don't know how this has happened. As as always, those moves are arriving in bunches right the rookie two correct keep the rooks the rook knight and bishop that but still your opponent can still get confused if you swap the rooks well actually i do not support the a5 move i understand there is nothing wrong black is still better but why would you why would you give the pawn on e6 rook a8 okay this i support wholeheartedly that's a very strong move because blundered the rook, I don't know how it happened. And and please don't play it knight versus knight, guys. That's that's a little bit too much. That's a little bit too much. No, they they actually still do. But luckily for I don't know, luckily for us perhaps, because I understand White was attempting to win this, but he was short on time. <laughs> Woof! What a day! What a day! Uh, wasn't let me be honest it wasn't easy it wasn't easy uh, so once again i think this will be the time when i will call it a day few conclusion thoughts so let me let me double check yeah no that that's the last game i have anyway so if anything else is planned pardon me uh right so conclusion first of all i have to admit those young players know how to play chess you know no jokes here very very strong guys and i'm not only talking about the under 18 section when you have you know, when you have brilliant grandmasters but yeah but even under 10 under 12 there have been quite a few very very interesting games and then once again my apologies for my technical dumbness when it came to Armageddon. Yeah, I do know, perhaps wasn't, uh, you know, up to this task of showing multiple games at the same time. But as I was informed by the technical crew that there were also difficulties setting up the game. So it's only part of blame goes to me. Um, okay, anyway, so you can check all the results on the official webpage world2020.ge and tomorrow please come back for the quarterfinals right so eight players will be left in each category that means tomorrow are the quarterfinals of world cut it and youth championship rapid championship let's not forget so once again, thanks for watching. Thanks the organizers for letting me be uh, the commentator for this event. And thanks to sponsors for supporting FIDE initiative to, uh, to hold the event for young talents. Thanks a lot and see you next time.